Welcome to another video. I promised I was going to show you the proof of the formula for perfect numbers and that's what I'm about to do. Now remember that Q is obtained by raising 2 to the power of a prime number P and then subtracting 1 from the result. For example, if the prime number is 3, 2 raised to power 3 is going to be 8. If you subtract 1 from 8, you're going to get 7. So 7 would be our Q in this case. That's how you obtain Q. Now Q is generally called a Mersenne prime. Now I don't want the meaning or relevance of Mersenne primes to take away from perfect numbers. So that's why I'm not going to go in depth into it. But just know that there's a special name for Q, which I'm going to talk about in another video. But let's say we already have our Q and now we want to show that this number n, which is a perfect number, is obtained by multiplying q, a Mersenne prime, by 2 raised to the power p minus 1, and it will always be a perfect number. Let's do the proof. So let's do the proof. Okay, we want to prove that this is um, a perfect number. And remember the definition of a perfect number, the sum of the proper divisors is equal to the number itself. And I gave you an example in the other video. If you haven't seen that video, uh, go watch the video. Okay, so here we say that Q is equal to 2 raised to power P minus 1, and both Q and P are prime numbers. So we know that P is prime and Q is prime. Okay, it is important that these two are primes, otherwise the number will not be perfect. Okay, and you obtain the second prime number using the first prime number P. So, so we know these two are perfect. So now let's talk about the factors. See, this proof is very informal, the way I'm saying it. Let's talk about the factors of n, which is the perfect number, okay? What are the numbers that will divide the perfect number? Well, look at it. It is formed by q, which is a prime number, so definitely q will divide n because it's one of the factors. And we know that 1 also will divide n because 1 divides every number and it's a proper divisor. And 2 will also divide n because this is made up of 2's. It's just 2 times 2 raised to the power 0, 2 raised to the power 1, 2 raised to the power 2. Those are all the p's because it depends on what p is. Okay? So the number of terms depends. If p was 7, then there will be 7 um, forms of 2. So watch this. The factors. Of n are the very first number is 1 the next number will be 2 the next number that can divide Q would be 4 or we can just say this is 2 raised to the power 1 2 raised to the power 2 we'll keep going until we get to 2 raised to the power P minus 1 do you see that Okay, so we're done with all the 2's, but we know that Q will also divide N, so let's start the list for Q. We can have Q. The next after Q would be um, Q multiplied by one of these. So this is 1 times Q. Then we're going to have 2 raised to the power 1 times Q, so we can have 2Q. We can keep going until we get to 2 raised to the power P minus 1, no, we're not going to use 2 raised to the power P minus 1 because remember, in the definition, it has to be a proper divisor. If we say 2 raised to the power P minus 1 times Q, then it's going to be N, but N cannot be one of its own proper divisors because it has to be less than N itself. So the biggest that we can get to will have to be um, from 2 raised to power 1, 2 raised to power 2, the biggest would be 2 raised to power p minus 2. 2 raised to power p minus 2 times q. So this is the biggest that we can get. These are all the factors. 
all possible factors of n. This is the only part that could be really hard to figure out. But once you figure this out, you're going to see this. Let's look at the sum of the factors. Okay, so sum of the proper, proper, proper factors of n. Okay, let's look at them. They're going to be, we're going to be adding 1 plus 2 plus, let me just do 2 squared, plus tap, 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 plus 2 to the p minus 1, plus, see, every term that is written here contains p, I mean q, rather. So we can factor out q and list out all the factors, the remaining, so it'll be 1 plus this is going to be 2. This is going to be a repeat of whatever we've done on the left-hand side, plus 2 squared, plus top, 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 plus. However, this one has 2 raised to the power p minus 1, but this only has 2 raised to the power p minus 2. It is short by 1, okay? So it's going to be 2 raised to the power p minus 2. And this is the sum of the factors of n. Remember, n is perfect if when you add up everything here, you're going to get n, okay? And that's what we want to show, that this sum is equal to n. Let's see. What do you think this is? This is the sum of a geometric series, okay? This is multiplied by 2 to get this. You multiply this by 2, you get this. Multiply this by 2, you keep going until you get to the last term. So, the common ratio of this geometric series is 2. And that's what's important. What is the first term? The first term is 1. Common ratio is 2. The only thing you need to find the sum of this geometric series is the number of terms in the series. So, how many terms are in here? Let's, let me give you an example. Let's say our p is 5. 1 plus 2 raised to the power 1, plus 2 raised to the power 2, plus 2 raised to the power 3, plus 2 raised to the power 4, plus... Okay, if p is 5, you're going to have... This number is going to be 4. So how many terms do you have in this series? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You have 5 terms. You see that? There are 5 terms, which is whatever is here, just add 1 to it. Whatever is here, add 1 to it. It will tell you the number of terms for your geometric series. So, if we sum all of these together, it's going to give us a sum. Remember that the sum of a geometric series that has n terms is the first term multiplied by r raised to the n minus 1 divided by r minus 1 from your algebra 2 or pre-calculus. And we already said the common ratio for this expression, I mean for this series, is 2. So if we, and our first term is 1, so if we use that formula, this is going to be equal to 1 times 2 raised to power. How many terms did we say it contains? Let's go back here. The number of terms is this last exponent plus 1. So look at this. The last exponent here is p minus 1. Let's add 1 to it. It becomes p, right? So the number of terms here, our n in this formula, is just going to be p. You see that? Minus 1. Over 2, minus 1. Okay, plus. Let's go here. We're going to do the same, ex exact same thing on this side. However, the last term here is p minus 2. So when we add 1 to it, like we did here, we're going to get, instead of getting p, we'll get p minus 1. So this is going to be q multiplied by a sum. And that sum is going to be 1 times 2 raised to the power p minus 1 minus 1 over 2 minus 1. Nice. So what do we get here? If we simplify this, watch this. The bottom is going to be 1. So this is just 2 raised to the power p minus 1. 2 raised to the power p minus 1. That's what you have here. Plus, this is q. If we simplify this, 
the bottom is going to be 1, the top is going to be 2 raised to the power p minus 1 minus 1. So it's going to be um, times 2 raised to the power p minus 1 minus 1. Now watch this. Have you seen this guy before? Yes. That's this guy. That's Q. So this actually is Q. Plus, if we distribute the Q here, we're going to have Q times 2 raised to the power of P minus 1 minus Q times this is Q. What do you see? This guy will take this guy out. And this is the only guy that is left. But we have seen this guy before. That's this guy which is the perfect number. So this leaves us with Q times 2 raised to the power P minus 1, which is our perfect number. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.